In this video, we're going to learn about differential equations that call Cauchy-Euler equations. Here's that equation is written in the general form. So what we can say about it? Well, we can say that it's a linear equation, right? Um, it can be a homogeneous or non-homogeneous, depending on whether the right-hand side is the function of x or just zero. But what does make this equation special? But what does make this equation special? How do we recognize Cauchy-Euler equation? We can recognize it by looking at the coefficients. So these are the coefficients, right? Now, what can we say about the coefficients? Well, we can see that coefficients contain constants a sub n, a sub n minus 1. Um, so all those a's are the constants. And then what else we have there? Well, each, each coefficient has x raised to the power x to the power n, x to the power n minus 1. Um, here is just x to the power 1. Here we have x to the power 0. So each coefficient has x raised to the power. But what's important to note is the power of x matches the order of the derivative. So notice here I have the nth derivative and power of x is n. Here I have order n minus 1 and then power is n minus 1. Here I have the first derivative and then power of x is 1. So that's what distinguishes the uh, Cauchy-Euler equation. By the way, another name for Cauchy-Euler equation is equidimensional equation. Now, here are some notes that we already talked about, right? How um, all a's are constants, and then power of x is the same as the order of the derivative in each term. And let's look now at the second order Cauchy-Euler equation. Here it is, so it's ax squared y double prime plus bx y prime plus cy equals zero. Um, it looks a little bit different from that general form, but let's see, let's confirm that it's the Cauchy-Euler equation. So each term has a constant coefficient, a, b, and c are constant coefficients, they've just been renamed compared to the general form, right? And then each term also has x raised to the power, x squared, x, and then, well, no x here, but we know that in the Cauchy-Euler equation, power of x should match the order of the derivative, so second derivative, second power. First derivative gives us power 1 for x, and then no derivative, well, x is raised to power 0, which is 1. That's why we don't see it at all. So, yes, that's um, Cauchy-Euler equation, and it's also homogeneous. See how the right-hand side is 0? So, so we're going to start by investigating this kind of equation, and then from that we can build up to higher order and, and to non-homogeneous equations. Remember, to find solution to non-homogeneous equation, we still need to know how to find solution to homogeneous equations. So knowing how to solve this equation is important. And now this is how we think about solving this homogeneous second order Cauchy-Euler equation. So we're going to try a solution of the form y equals x to the power m, well, some kind of power. And of course, the goal will be to determine this power. Well, if we assume that this is a solution, then it should satisfy the equation, right? How do we show that? Well, we have to plug in that solution into the equation, and that means that we need to find the first and the second derivative. So let's try that. Y prime is, we'll need to use the power rule, right? Power, go, power goes in the front, m, and then x to the power, and then the original power gets reduced by 1, m minus 1. So that's going to be the first derivative. Um, how about the second derivative? Remember, m is the constant, right? So that constant stays, and then I'm going to be applying power rule one more time. So this power goes to the front, m minus 1, and then this power gets reduced by 1. So it's going to be m minus 2. Now we're ready to plug this into the equation. Let's see, a x squared, so I'm here, ax squared, then I have to put y double prime, this expression, m times m minus 1 times x to the power m minus 2, okay, plus, next term, bx y prime, b 
x, y prime is m times x to the power m minus 1. And then the last term is plus c times y. y is x to the power m equals 0. Now I notice that terms can be simplified. So what I can simplify here is the following. Let's say for the first term I have x squared and then I have x to the power m minus 2. So since bases are the same, I can combine, right? Or I can multiply x squared by x to the power m minus 2. So remember, when we multiply um, same bases, their powers get added. So that means that I'll have a m times m minus 1 and then x to the power 2 plus m minus 2. So that 2 and minus 2 will cancel, so I'll just have m. And now I can do the same trick for the second term. x and then x to the power m minus 1 can be multiplied, and I'll have to add the powers. So power will be 1 plus m minus 1. Um, and I will be left with power m again. Plus b times m times x to the power m. And then nothing I can do in the last term, so we'll just leave it like that. Um, and now I can see that each term contains x to the power m, so it's a common factor. It means that we can factor it out, so I'll put it in the front, and then what will be left is a m times m minus 1 plus b times m plus c equals 0. So remember, we started by assuming that this is solution to our equation, and the only way it can be solution to the equation if it satisfies our equation. Well, we just plugged it in, and we have to think for what values of m this will be satisfied. Uh, now, the way this expression is structured, I have a product. I have a product of x to the power m and this expression. This ex equation will be satisfied uh, for those values of m when x to the power m equals 0 or a m times m minus 1 times b m plus c equals 0. First of all, I have to make a note. I have to make a note that x itself should not be equal to 0. So base cannot be equal to 0. And um, I'll explain why in a second. x not equal to 0 why x is not equal to 0? Well, because if x equals 0, think what happens to our equation. If x equals 0, then the first and the second term of this differential equation is going to be gone. It means that we're not going to be dealing with um, differential equation at all. So this means that as we talk about the solution to this equation, we always consider that x cannot be equal to 0. Going back to this case, if we know that x is non-zero, so this base is non-zero, um, can I think of any value of m that gives me zero results as I raise x to that power? Well, no, anything non-zero raised to any power will never be equal zero. So that means that there is nothing we can produce from that case. Um, we can't talk about any values of m that will make that case to be true. However, we can talk about values of m that will make this case true. By the way, keep in mind that a, b, and c are the constants from our original equation. So when we look at the specific example, a, b, and c will be just you know, some numbers. Um, but the question is, how do we find values of m that satisfy this equation? What's going to be helpful is to simplify this expression a little bit so that we can recognize what we're looking at. That means that I will distribute a m over here. It's going to be a m squared minus a m plus b m plus c. And as soon as I distribute a m, now I'm seeing that actually we have quadratic uh, uh, equation in front of us, right? So that second power makes it quadratic. So that's the first, that's the leading term, a m squared. Now the second term is just the term with m. And um, what I'll do, I'll put those two together by factoring out m. So it's going to be plus b minus a times m. Okay, so here's that second term and its coefficient plus just the constant at the end. 
So we're looking at the quadratic equation. It means that to find which values of m are going to satisfy this case, and we'll provide solution to the equation, we simply have to solve this quadratic equation. Solve this the quadratic equation. We know when we solve a quadratic equation, we always end up with two solutions. But those solutions can be different, right? They can be just two different solutions to real numbers and they're two different real numbers. We can have a repeated solution. So that's when we get just one number, but it's multiplicity is two. Or we can have two complex solutions and they're conjugates of each other. And now based on each case, solution, a general solution to our homogeneous second order Cauchy-Euler equation will have a different form. So let's look at the table where all those cases are summarized and described. Here it is. By the way, that quadratic equation that we just looked at, here it is again, is called either auxiliary or characteristic equation. And that should remind you about the times when we solved homogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients. Technically, the idea is very, very similar. So here we're also going to have characteristic equation. In this case, it's quadratic, as we said, and these are all the cases. And this is how you will form a general solution to the second order Cauchy-Euler differential equation. Here, here it is again. So if characteristic equation has two distinct real roots, M1 and M2, and they're not equal to each other, then this is how the general solution to second order Cauchy Euler equation will look like. So it's c1x to the power, that's the first solution, and then plus c2x to the power, that's the second real solution. Now, what if we have, what if the characteristic equation has repeated real roots? In other words, m1 equals m2. Well, then this is how you're going to form the general solution. So the differential equation, so it's c1x to the power m1, well, that, that repeated solution, plus c2x to the power m1, I had to fix it here, um, and then times ln of x, so we'll have to multiply, so since um, roots are repeated, we'll have to multiply by this extra factor, ln of x. And I think since we have experience with solving equations with constant coefficients of higher orders, um, I think I can add here a note, and that note is the following. If we have higher order Cauchy-Euler differential equation, and let's say we have three repeated roots, then the general solution will be set up like that. So you're going to have c1x to the power m1 for the first root, plus c2 times um, x to the power m1 times ln of x for the second root, and then plus c3x to the power m1 ln of x squared. So for each additional repeated rule, we'll have to multiply by another factor of ln of x. And I hope you can see a somewhat similar pattern with equations when we had just constant coefficients. In fact, you should see some connection with that when we talk about conjugate complex roots for characteristic equation. Now let me remind you that complex roots have form alpha plus i beta and then alpha minus i beta, so, so both of them and their conjugates of each other. So this is how the general solution is going to be formed. c1 times x to the power alpha and then cosine alpha times the ln of x and then plus c2 x to the power alpha sine of beta ln of x. So once again, hopefully this reminds you of general solution to differential equation with constant coefficients. So there are definitely some, some similarity. So this is how we obtain general solution to the homogeneous second order um, Cauchy-Euler differential equation. And from here, we can build it up to higher order equations. So next, we're going to look at several examples.